Tag TV brings you daily news bulletin from India. Breaking news and views from India. Good evening. Welcome to South Asia Newsline. I'm Skarim Zimik. Here are the top stories we're tracking for you on Wednesday, the 17th of June. India capable of giving befitting replies, says Prime Minister Modi amid border tension with China. NATO reiterates support for peace efforts in Afghanistan. And shopping malls reopen as Nepal eases lockdown. And now for all the details. India's Prime Minister Narendra Modi said on Wednesday that the sacrifices of Indian soldiers in the violent border face-off with Chinese troops earlier this week will not go in vain. At least 20 Indian soldiers lost their lives in the border clash with Chinese troops on Monday night in a major escalation of a weeks-long standoff in the western Himalayas. India's Prime Minister Narendra Modi on Wednesday said the sacrifices of Indian soldiers along the border with China will not go in vain. While speaking in response to the death of at least 20 soldiers in a border clash with Chinese troops on Monday night in a major escalation of a weeks-long standoff between the two Asian giants in the western Himalayas. According to Indian officials, no shots were fired, but soldiers were hit with clubs and stones during a brawl that erupted between the two sides in remote Galwan Valley in mountainous region of Ladakh. India's foreign ministry said there had been casualties on both sides, but China has not disclosed any casualties so far. Indian Prime Minister Modi has called for an all-party meeting on Friday to discuss this situation. Bharat. शांति चाहता है, लेकिन भारत उकसाने पर हर हाल में यथोचित हर हाल में यथोचित जवाब देने में सक्षम है। Meanwhile, angry protesters burned images of Chinese President Xi Jinping on Wednesday across India, and some even called for a boycott of Chinese products. The deaths are the first since the last major border clash in 1967 between the nuclear-armed neighbours. China said on Wednesday it does not want to see any more violence on the border and its foreign ministry reiterated that it is not to blame for the clash. India on Wednesday reported 2003 coronavirus-associated deaths in the last 24 hours, taking the total death toll to 11,903. More than 354,000 coronavirus cases have been reported in India, the world's fourth worst affected country. India reported 2,003 deaths in the last 24 hours, taking the coronavirus death toll to 11,903 on Wednesday. At least 354,065 coronavirus cases have been reported in the country so far out of which 155,227 are active cases and 186,934 people have recovered. Citing the rising infection numbers, authorities in Indian capital New Delhi, one of the worst affected regions due to the pandemic, are now transforming railway coaches into facilities equipped to care for the virus patients to cope the shortage in hospital beds. 500 coaches have been equipped with three oxygen cylinders per carriage increasing Delhi's capacity by 8,000 beds. Train coaches were already being used as isolation wards in various parts of the country. In this coach, there are two toilets, two washrooms, there are also dustbins, and there are three oxygen cylinders in this coach, if there is a need. But in these coaches, there are mild symptoms for them to keep them in this coach. India is the fourth worst affected country in the world with cases steadily increasing. Prime Minister Narendra Modi imposed a nationwide lockdown in late March that has since been eased, including the opening of shops and places of worship. 
Modi since then has continued consultations with provincial governments on ways to check the spread of coronavirus during Unlock 1.0. Moving on, India once again hit out at Pakistan over its gross human rights violation, promoting terrorism and treatment of minorities, saying that Islamabad should practice tolerance towards their minorities and good neighborliness for the eternal peace in the South Asian region. India on Tuesday yet again hit out at Pakistan over its gross human rights violations, promoting terrorism and treatment of minorities, saying Islamabad should practice tolerance towards their minorities and good neighborliness so that the South Asian region sees eternal peace. Exercising India's right to reply at the 43rd session of UNHRC in Geneva, Vimarsh Arjun, first secretary at India's permanent mission to United Nations, said the pathetic situation of minorities in Pakistan is well known where the systematic misuse of blasphemy laws has condemned their lives utterly miserable. Aryan in his reply also referred to Pakistan as epicenter of global terrorism. I would once again invoke VDPA to ask Pakistan to abjure its territorial ambition, which is grossly violative of all human rights. Instead, they should practice tolerance towards their minorities and good neighborliness towards us, so that the South Asian region sees eternal peace, the absence of which can mostly be attributed to the Pakistani deep state. In 1947, minorities formed 23% of Pakistan's population, they have now dwindled to make nearly 3%. Activists blame Pakistan has subjected Christians, Hindus, Sikhs, Ahmadiyas, Pashtuns, Sindhis and the Baloch to draconian blasphemy laws, blatant abuse and forced conversions over the years. NATO chief Jen Stoltenberg has said that the alliance will continue to adjust its presence to support the Afghan peace process, but the Taliban must reduce violence and break all bonds with terrorist groups and engage in intra-Afghan talks in good faith. NATO Secretary General Jen Stoltenberg on Tuesday said that the alliance will continue to adjust its presence to support the Afghan peace process. But the Taliban must live up to its commitments, to reduce violence, break all bonds with al-Qaeda and other terrorist groups and engage in the intra-Afghan talks in good faith. Speaking during a virtual press conference preceding a NATO meeting of defense ministers, Stoltenberg said, NATO has seen important steps taken regarding the prisoner release and in other areas relevant to the slow-moving Afghan peace process. NATO will continue to adjust our presence in support of the peace process. But for the peace to succeed, the Taliban must live up to their commitments to reduce violence, break all bonds with Al-Qaeda and other international terrorist groups, and engage in inter-Afghan talks in good faith. Meanwhile, Afghanistan, Russia and the US in a virtual trilateral meeting held earlier this week stated, that they expect that an initial meeting between the negotiating teams must be held immediately to agree on agenda and next steps. All three sides reiterated their strong commitment to an Afghan-owned peace process and support for safeguarding Afghanistan's achievements over the past 19 years. In news from Bangladesh, coronavirus cases tally reached 94,481 in Bangladesh on Wednesday, with 1,262 deaths reported so far. Amid a rapid increase of infections, the government has reimposed a zone-based lockdown a few days after businesses were allowed to resume. The total number of coronavirus cases in Bangladesh reached 94,481 on Wednesday, with 1,262 deaths reported so far. Bangladesh on Tuesday recorded the highest ever spike in infections, with 3,862 positive cases in a single day. 
The death rate in the country now stands at 1.34 percent, health authorities said. Amid a rapid increase of infections, the Bangladesh government was forced to reimpose a zone-based lockdown earlier this month, a few days after businesses were allowed to resume. The South Asian country initially imposed a nationwide lockdown on March 26 to curb the spread of the virus and later extended it until May 30. The government then relaxed restrictions starting May 31st, citing the lockdown's impact on the economy and people's lives. However, as it slowly hit the economic restart button, total cases have almost doubled since June 1st. As Nepal plans to open its nationwide lockdown in three phases, with ease restrictions on non-essential businesses, shopping malls in capital Kathmandu were reopened on Monday. The customers who visited the shops were asked to follow precautionary measures like wearing masks, gloves and temperatures were also checked at the entrances. Shopping malls in Nepali capital Kathmandu reopened this week with precautionary measures like wearing masks, gloves and checking temperatures and sanitizers being provided at the main entrances. Though the malls reopened from Monday, shopkeepers still miss the flow of customers and are now worried for the businesses affected due to the coronavirus pandemic and lockdown imposed to curb the spread. The Nepali government had enforced a nationwide lockdown in late March and has since then extended it for at least seven times. अब तत्काल ही अब बिजनेस पहला को रूप में जाना था अब हमें लग सा अब कई बरस नहीं लग सा दस तो लग सा है ना अब तय पनी अब घर में बस है रा टाइम बनो ना अब गुजारने घर हो जा अपनो पोस्टल मार्ग नहीं सामान रोज शफा करने कहाँ की करने स्थिति रहा अब लगनी वाली सब ले आए रा नेपाल प्लांस टू ईज इट्स नेशनवाइड लॉकडाउन इन थ्री फेजेस। इन द फर्स्ट फेज, शॉप्स हैव बीन अलाउड टू ओपन एंड प्राइवेट व्हीकल्स फॉर शॉर्ट डिस्टेंसेस हैव स्टार्टेड ऑपरेटिंग फ्रॉम जून 11। द फर्स्ट फेज विल लास्ट फॉर 21 डेज, फॉलोड बाय द सेकंड एंड द थर्ड फेजेस दैट विल लास्ट फॉर 15 डेज ईच। नेपाल हैज रिपोर्टेड मोर देन 6,590 कोरोनावायरस केसेस टिल नाउ। the deadly virus has claimed 19 deaths in the Himalayan nation so far. A taxi driver in the Indian capital, New Delhi, who was left with no customers after the coronavirus started spreading, has taken up driving private ambulances to earn money. A taxi driver in Indian capital, New Delhi, who lost his livelihood when the coronavirus pandemic struck, has taken up driving an ambulance transporting patients, even victims of COVID-19, to their grave. Mohammad Amir Khan used to work as a taxi driver in New Delhi, but no trade in recent coronavirus lockdown. He took up driving an ambulance instead. Amir has kept his new work a secret from his neighbours as people feared the spread of the virus. He only gets about $220 a month, which he says doesn't compensate for the risks. आपको पता ही सब काम धंधे सब बंद हुए पड़े हर आदमी परेशान है तो कुछ तो करना पड़ेगा इस बारे में समाज सेवा भी हो जाएगी हमारी किसी को तो आगे आना पड़ेगा सर क्या समझे डॉक्टर्स नर्सेस एंड अदर मेडिकल स्टाफ ट्रीटिंग पेशेंट्स अक्रॉस इंडिया से दे हैव बीन अटैक्ड एंड स्पैट एड विद सम ऑस्ट्रेलियाई फ्रेंड्स � from where the deadly virus first originated. Well, that's the way it was in South Asia this evening. Before we conclude the top stories once again. <music> India capable of giving befitting replies, says Prime Minister Modi amid border tension with China. NATO reiterates support for peace efforts in Afghanistan. Shopping malls reopen as Nepal eases lockdown. Now our viewers can watch the show on SouthAsianNewsline.com. You can also visit us on Facebook.com slash SAsianNewsline. And follow us on Twitter at SAsianNewsline. 
That's all in tonight's edition. We'll see you same time tomorrow. Good night. Subscribe Tag TV YouTube channel and press the notification button.